Hey everybody. So I'm coming to you from inside Unreal Engine Editor this time because I wanted to talk about this holographic display. Uh, the holographic display is something that I've gotten a few questions about uh, in my virtual production studio and so I just wanted to kind of show how that's created. So I'm here in the editor right now. My video is being fed in via Blackmagic SDI. So that's going in live, being live keyed in editor. And I have an NDI uh, scan converter is running on my Unreal Engine computer. And then I have the NDI receiver running here inside the engine. So I'll link in the description to a tutorial on how to use the NDI receiver in general, as well as how to be able to activate the NDI receiver inside Unreal Engine Editor so that you'll have you know, the ability to get this live feed of your computer screen into the editor. So the, the tricks that I'm really gonna cover here inside this particular video is just how to create the holographic display itself. I'm just hold Alt and left mouse click and reposition this a little bit. Uh, there's two things about this that I, um, I'm gonna share. One is that the display is mirrored, right? So if I go to the left side of my screen and as I look at it, you'll see that the right side of the hologram is showing the uh, you know, place actors menu from Unreal Engine. So that makes sense from a presentation standpoint. If I turn to my right, it's frame left, and I'm looking at the actual monitor that's on my desktop, it's off camera, but the hologram is supposed to represent that screen, and the viewer, from the camera's point of view, would actually see the back side of that, and it would be mirrored, and so we want to mirror that. So that's actually really easy to do. It's just by scaling the plane in a negative direction, right? So I've got the plane selected right now, and if you go over here and look at the X scale, you'll see that it's a negative value. If we go back full screen and take a look at this, I could just take the X uh, scale and, oops, sorry, it's W, I just hit R, and uh, scale this, and if I scale back to a positive, now you're looking at the appropriate, you know, the, the front view of uh, the screen, and we've got the left side of the Unreal Engine editor is on the left side of the plane. So to mirror that, all we're just doing is scaling uh, to a negative value proportion, and now the left side of my actual monitor is showing on the right side of the hologram, so you get that mirrored view. So that, that's easy enough. So the next thing is creating the actual semi-transparent uh, view itself inside the hologram, and that's all just done in the material. So down here, I've got the material that originally was created by just dragging and dropping the NDI texture output onto the plane, it created the material. I'll just double-click that material, bring up its definition here. And uh, basically, a few things got changed. By default, if I scroll down here, normally this would be a opaque material, and I changed that to translucent. And normally this would be a default lit material, and I changed it to unlit. So that basically gave us our emissive color and opacity inputs on the material. You can see RGB from the NDI actual texture. That's going into emissive color. That gives us the color of the hologram. And then opacity. Opacity, I've got a bunch of calculations going on here. And what these do is actually calculate the brightness of each pixel. And then I'm attenuating that. I'm lifting it up a little bit so that black or dark pixels will actually still show up as semi-transparent so that we can see them. Uh, basically, what's happening here is this little bit of calculations, basically a bunch of multiply nodes, one for each red, green, blue channel, uh, they're calculating the luminance uh, by multiplying red by 0.3, uh, green is being multiplied by 0.59, and blue is being multiplied by 0.11. So this is a classic luminance calculation from RGB. Uh, I got this out of Steve Wright's Digital Compositing for Film and Video book, so totally get that book if you're uh, interested in compositing or working on compositing. You should have that book. You should also have Ron Brinkman's book on uh, compositing as well. Both of them cover this luminance calculation where you multiply red by 0.3, green is multiplied by 0.59, and blue is multiplied by 0.11. You add all three of these together, so this add node adds the two of these, and then this add node adds this, and that is your classic luminance key. And I could just drag and drop that right into opacity, right? I could take the output of that luminance key, put it in opacity, save it, and display the result. Uh, what we happen to do there is we lose the opacity on the darkest pixels. And if I'm showing an Unreal Engine 
screen. It has a lot of dark pixels. We could potentially lose visibility of the, uh, the screen itself. So I want to uh, basically lift the dark pixels, make them brighter. Uh, but then I want to attenuate the top end. The brightest pixels need to get um, you know, normalized down to one so that uh, we don't have values above one. So that's what's going on here. Uh, this is just a scalar parameter. You just create that by holding the S key and clicking. And that creates a scalar parameter. Let's delete that for now. And uh, we have a uh, scalar parameter here that can go from 0 to 1. I have it set to 0.5 right now. So we're going to add that to our luminance key output. And that adds in that 0.5. So as a result, anything that's black, 0, actually becomes 0.5. The problem with that is anything that's bright, that's 1, uh, and solid, is now going to be 1.5. It's, it's greater than 1. And we really want to keep that opacity normalized so that the highest value is actually 1. So what we do here is just add 1 to the lift value. So my black pixels uh, that are uh, 0, you know, if I, if I have a 0 value in here, that's going to become 1. Uh, if I have 0.5, the output of this will be 1.5. And then we're going to divide that into our luminance key. And that way, our bright pixels that started out at 1.5, they become 1 because we're dividing them by 1.5. Our uh, black pixels that are now 0.5, well, they'll be divided by 1.5, and so it'll be somewhat lower. Um, and then we take that value and we put that in opacity and save it. And you'll see that our screen gets to be a little bit more semi-opaque. Let's close this up. And there we go. There's our hologram. So those are the tricks to create the hologram screen. And uh, hopefully this helps. Until next time, have fun.